Well, thank you very much for coming out here. Um, we have a lot of thanks. Um, it, it's, it, it's tremendous how the, the, the support that the Hall of Fame gets, the appreciation for how great the men on this stage happen to be. Um, I've been coming here for more than 40 years, and I think we also really owe um, a lot of thoughts of thanks for what the Hall of Fame has done in growing this weekend. Um, the parade, the events, um, it's really made uh, this weekend one of the great, probably the most enjoyable that I have uh, in, in, in a year. And I think it, it's such a great reminder. I mean, I thought yesterday seeing the flags from, from Panama and Puerto Rico and the, hearing the speeches and hearing amazing speech from a widow raising her children and thinking, you know, this, this weekend is who we are as Americans and, it's, and we should be very proud to be here. <laughs> There was a time, um, and it's, it's relevant because of a, lot of a lot of the people that are here. Um, we went through um, what for me was called the longest winter, um, the strike of 94 into 95. And people have a tendency to remember only what happened with home runs and a, a, a later era, but 1995, in, in, in my mind, was one of the most important years in baseball history. It brought it back. And um, Harold Baines and Mike Messina were there with Cal Ripken. Who I, it, it, that summer, to me, was so important because we focused the entire year on a man going to work every day and signing autographs and all the rest. We also had the, the great experience of you know, when... Um, Major League Baseball, or a lot of people thought that the Seattle Mariners should be shipped to St. Petersburg. Great idea. Um, <laughs> and that team with three Hall of Famers, Edgar, Randy, Jr. <laughs> Saved baseball in that city, built a, led to a great ballpark, and... I think we all know, and we've seen it for all three of those Hall of Famers. Um, you people from Seattle travel unbelievably. I don't want to know how much money, but. Yeah. 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 But I'd like to ask first, Mike and, and Harold, what you remember about that, that summer with Cal going for, breaking the, the, the consecutive game record and just how the, the, the city of Baltimore and baseball responded to it. You have memories of that? Oh, well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, I just, I remember a lot of, of Cal um, yeah, spending a lot of time after games. He, he put in hours and hours and hours just to, to please the fans. Uh, signing stuff and taking pictures and all the stuff that you have to do that he did. I remember traveling. I remember how tired, of, how worn down he was as we approached September. Um, and, of course, I remember the, the couple of days where he tied the record. Uh, he hit a homer in the game that he tied the record, and he hit a homer in the game that he broke the record. And I got to pitch the game. I got to pitch 21-31. Um, and I remember giving up a homer in the top of the first and, kicking myself and saying, you got to get serious now because this is a pretty big deal. <laughs> so uh, so we did, I did better from that point on, and, and uh, we found a way to win the game. And, and of course, it was, it was the middle of the game when it became, and I said this, uh, it was more than, it became something else besides a ball game after the fifth inning when it became official that, you know, he takes a victory lap, and everybody's congratulating both sides. Uh, it was. It would. It just. It's really stopped being a game and stopped. It started being a celebration of, of baseball and and uh, it was just. It was just a great day and a great experience and I'm so fortunate that I was able to be there and, and participate 
in his in his streak and in, in, in the day he broke the record. Harold, did you, did you think about? I mean, first of all, what it meant to baseball, and second, could you have ever imagined that that was the beginning? We haven't had a, a labor stoppage since, and after all, you grew up in baseball when we were having strikes about every three years or lockouts. Yeah, um, it was. I remember 21, 31, especially. Um, I was forced off for playing the game, but Cal is a big kid all the time. He, he plays with his teammates all the time. But that particular game, he changed his uniform eight times. <laughs> Every inning he had to change, because everybody wanted something, cause, because it was so special. <laughs> that, that, uh, when you have presidents coming to the game to see the game and stuff like that, it's, it's a night I'll never forget. It was very special. I, I agree. And Edgar, I mean, that, that, I mean, even though you didn't beat Cleveland in the ALCS, uh, my memory of that is it was one of the most passionate times with a, a city responding to a team um, before you hit the double. <laughs> but, I mean, could you sense how important the Mariners' run in that season meant? Yeah, I think that uh, with uh, what the team was going through, uh, we didn't know whether the team was going to stay in Seattle or, or not. Um, I think that um, it became um, um, so important uh, for, for the uh, baseball in Seattle. Um, at, at the time, I did really, uh, didn't know the magnitude, but after the series uh, that the, um, the boat passed to keep the team in, in Seattle, then I realized, uh, and we all did, with it, this is this is huge uh, because what baseball means for not only the city but uh, to to the whole country, um, and um, uh, that's that's when we re realized that uh, it was big. This I also found something interesting. I mean, in your case, um, how baseball evolves and. Uh, I find it really interesting because 20 years ago, um, I don't think anybody, they, there was like, oh, I'm sorry, he's a DH. He's not a Hall of Famer. <laughs> Just as, and I'll get into the, the, the relief pitcher aspect. But, I mean, when, um, I saw you play when you were a really good third baseman. So uh, I remember that very, very well. But, um, <laughs> do you, <laughs> Did you think, as as your career went along, that there would come a time when uh, DHs would have the same equal rights as uh, <laughs> as position players? You know, at, um, uh, only the probably um, eight ten years uh, ago. That's when I started realizing, you know, that um, um, the on base percentage. Uh, was uh, getting some uh, track into um, important for the writers and so on. And uh, sabermetrics have started uh, playing a big role in the game. And uh, uh, from that point on, I start thinking that, hey, uh, the age is going to probably uh, be more important for, uh, for people and writers in, in the game. Well, you're here, Paul Molitor. Mm -hmm. oh, um, and there will be many more. <laughs> I remember you more than Alfred. Yeah, he did. You probably only oh, one of I, I, I was thinking he was playing right field, so. Uh. I didn't think Harold said much. Harold, the Harold didn't say much. Yeah, he's better. Jump right in right there. He was there. Good. I got to protect myself. Yeah, I think yeah, that was good, that though. Is, I like uh, that. That was good. I love it. And the other thing, you know, my, maybe 30 years ago, there, there, it was that stigma of being a relief pitcher. I mean, and, and uh, it was, I remember when I first started the business, people would say, well, you know, he went to the bullpen because he couldn't start. Or, and um, the idea of a relief pitcher in Cooperstown was not something 
that was imagined that would happen very often. And yesterday, with two, two of the greatest relief pitchers in history being inducted, and sitting behind you, Wally Fingers, Bruce Gossage, Bruce Suter, Dennis Eckersley, just it's remarkable how the game has evolved. And what I'm curious with both you, with both Lee and Mariano, when you were first moved into the bullpen, did you think of it as a demotion or did you realize that, listen, this is the way the game's going? Well, Peter, for me, I was just happy to be in the big leagues. I mean, I didn't care. <laughs> I did not care if it was as a starter or as a, as a reliever. I mean, as long as I stay in the big leagues, I was fine with that, you know. But uh, I think smarter people than me, they put me in the, people in the bullpen for a reason. I think that as a starter, I have enough gas for five innings. After five innings, I was done. <laughs> After that, I was done. So they put me in the bullpen for a reason. You know, I wasn't thinking about none of this thing. I was thinking about just uh, make sure that I give my team as as much as much uh, opportunities to win the game. And Lee. Well, for myself, it was um, it happened to me, and I was in Double A, and I actually quit playing the game of baseball, and I, I went back home and played college basketball for a season, and because it, like you said earlier, it was a slap in the face, you know, like you're not good enough to start. Uh, they throw you in the bullpen, and back then, starters didn't come out of the game in the in the seventh or eighth inning if they were leading, so you only got to pitch in like mop up roll, and um, like uh, Mr. Mussina just said, uh, Dallas Green. Mr. Messina? <laughs> Dallas Green said. Are you older than me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> couple days. But couple Dallas, days. Couple days. Dallas, Green, <laughs> Dallas Green said to me uh, when they had me starting in, in, in uh, the Mountain League, he said, hey, you're only going two in, so it might be the last two. Might as well be the last two. So <laughs> that's just why I end up there. But it, the, the thing about it is you don't realize, uh, you don't know how your arm is going to react, you know, to you know, warming up a couple of times in, in a game. And actually, a lot of people didn't realize that you would warm up two or three times in a game and not go in back in the day. And I didn't know how mom was going to react to that. But thank God I came back and did that relief pitch and roll. Help that for me. <laughs> All right. How difficult is it pitching when you know that closing the game is really closing somebody else's win. You're doing it for a teammate. Oh my God, it's so important. It's like you putting a, you have all your money and you're giving it to someone that you're gonna trust that he will take care of that money and grow that money. Right? <laughs> and for me, it was just like That's that. That's not Moose how I looked me. at it. Well, yeah. <laughs> if you look at it like that, I said, man, Moose is giving me, Moose is giving me all his money and I had to take care of it. You know, so I mean, I'm, that's the way I think. I said, man, when I'm going in there, uh, you I did, know all those guys. You did okay. There you go. Yeah. You see? Did I grow your money I, or yeah, no? Yeah, we did good. There you we go. We did good, man. There you go. Appreciate it. So, so, that's the way I think of it. Uh, 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 this is it, uh, Peter, when, when my guys fighting from the first inning to the seventh inning and they're yes. giving me the opportunity to save the game or close the game, I mean, those are critical moments, you know, in uh, situations where uh, sometimes the manager puts you in situations that are critical and you have to come up on top. So tough that I used to have an afro. And uh, pretty soon, man, everything went. Oh, everything went. Oh, you said, oh, my God. You know? She had to leave here, man. So that's what happened. That's what happened. That's, that's what happened. I'm telling you. All that pressure, you just take it out. Jeez. So it's no easy situation, though. You know, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's that or just go home. Okay, I'd stay with that. Did you have that same feeling, Lee? He couldn't answer it any better than that, man. I, you know, when you come in, like you said, team has been battling out there for like, you know, three hours, and you come in and screw it up in about ten minutes. <laughs> no, that hurts. That hurts. But really, really, it's not more so just for you as an individual. It takes the total whole ball club. Oh, you know, if you get your butt kicked in the fourth inning, I'm like, hey man, we got beat in the fourth inning. 
But you, you've spent a lot there for three hours, and then uh, you come in there and, and you give it up in like uh, 10 minutes. That's definitely where the hair goes. The hair's out. <laughs> <laughs> Harold, one of the things that <clears throat> it always fascinates me how much expectation Go goes hey, with you, being the first pick in a baseball go draft. Is that something that weighed on you for a few years and early in your career? Not at all. Um, I was very, uh, I grew up in a small town like here in Cooperstown. You know, I was, when I got drafted, I was very naive. I didn't have an agent. You know, they called me the night before, say we will possibly draft you uh, tomorrow, number one. I had to find a lawyer in the yellow pages. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And he represented me the next day. So. I didn't, I mean, I, I drive, if you call it pressure, I drive on pressure. I was a better ball player from the seventh inning on. That's when you really can help your team the most. That's why he's sitting here, man. <laughs> That's right. And, and Mike, I mean, you had, you had a choice to make when you were coming out of high school. You would have been one of the first players chosen were you completely comfortable from the first day you arrived at Stanford that you had made the right decision? Well, heck no. How much? <laughs> yeah. So you show up at 18 years old, and, and, and whether it's pro ball or, or college, you, you don't know what you're going to be able to deal with. Or, you know, I, yeah, it was good in high school, big deal. You know, can I deal with this? Now there's the best player I saw last year. Now there's nine of them in the lineup. And, and can I, can I do that? Can I deal with it? So I didn't know what I was going to do. I'm a freshman all the way. I'm from the East Coast, so I'm all the way in the West Coast. And, you know, I didn't even know if I could wash my clothes or, you know, any of that stuff. So, yeah, there's a lot going on there at the beginning of school. And, and I was just trying to survive, basically. And, and uh, you know, luckily I threw the ball well, and they needed a starter. And they actually needed two starters. We, we won the national championship my freshman year with, with a senior and two freshmen starting. Uh, so uh, we got really fortunate, and I was fortunate to, to, to get to go there and meet those people and, and, and play ball there. And, and uh, I kind of just figured that, that if, I was, if they were really interested when I was 18, as long as I stayed healthy, they'd be interested again when I was 21. So that's kind of the way the, way the plan went, and, and that's how it worked out. And I'd do, I'd do it again. I'd go back again if I had to make the same decision over. One of the things that fascinates me most after 50 years Doing, doing what I do is that, uh, and it's most, one of the most important thing, things to me, is understanding how human all of you are. You, you can be, you're all Hall of Famers, but you're all humans too. And you mentioned the, the insecurity when you were a freshman at Stanford. And, and yet I want, once met one of your professors who said that some people thought, oh, you know, he never worries. He's, and he, he said to me, no, he told those people, you're convicted because you are prepared. And, and uh, th that's, that's what makes, and I'd like all of you to talk about just the insecurities that go into being a major league player. Well, I'll, I'll start this. I'll start with. Well, you want to go, go, go back? I don't want to start. I'm going to finish. Let's, I'm yeah. a, I'm a you want to finish now? I'm a closer. Are you, are you kidding me? So now he wants that's to no, that's no, that's no. Well, I, he, yeah, you that's, stood right there yesterday and wanted to know why you went last. That was yesterday. <laughs> and now you want to go last. But I'm a closer. <laughs> now he wants his job back. Now he wants it. Yeah, you want your job back now. No? I want my job back, yeah. <laughs> no, it, uh. it is fascinating to me, though. I mean, because. Um, but in, in, in the case of you and Lee, a good friend of mine who's a general manager in the, in the National League West wants baseball to drop the statistic blown save because you can, you can save 47 games and you lose leads in two of them and they have he blown save in, 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 uh, in bold-faced print. In, in the box score. And, and it just, he said, that's not fair. People have no idea what players go through. Well, Peter, I mean, uh, you say it right. It's, it's, it's a lot of going into preparation and make sure that we are physically and mentally prepared for that moment, you know, that are not only 
mentally and physically also, but you giving your best, you know? I mean, I always, whatever happened, whatever the result was, good or bad, I always ask myself these two questions. First of all was, I was mentally and physically prepared, and did I give my best? And if, if those questions were positive, I was okay because I was giving my best. I mean, I always, I mean, I, I, as a human, I, yes, we are human, Peter. We're not a machine. We're human. You cut us and we bleed. All right, so therefore, I mean, uh, we want to make mistakes. So we want to make as less mistakes than we want to make. But we do make mistakes. You know, and these guys here, they, they don't let you breathe <laughs> <laughs> mistakes. You know, we, so we have to be definitely prepared for that. And, and it goes home. It, it takes a lot of, of you. It's a toll that you just have to make sure that you, when you're facing those Harold said, you know, he's ready. He's better than the seventh owner, you know. And that's where the game really, really uh, defines you win or lose. So we have to be in our game always. And it uh, takes a lot preparation to do that, you know, but uh, at the same time, you know, yes, when you say that you, we, you can save 50 games and you blow one game, I mean, it's like, oh, what happened, you know, this, this, this guy is human. <laughs> yes, we are human. So it's, it's a little hard. Now, do, you, do you face that at times? Do you have doubts about yourself? Not doubts. My, my problem was injuries. You know, I got them early in my career. So that made me have to work harder just to get to the game. I mean, I had to get there at 12 just to get practice and, and service from the trainer just to get on the field. That's the hardest part for me. Once you start having injuries, your your future is can be pretty short, but I got fortunate to have some great people around me that kept me healthy enough, but my last 12 years were one-year contracts, so I couldn't afford to fail. Wow, that's <laughs> amazing. And Edgar, you went through that with injuries. Yeah, uh, the injuries, uh, it was uh, a problem. It, usually my left hamstring, <laughs> it, it tends to blow up. Um, I had some injuries with my shoulder and um, some other minor injuries, but uh, the hamstring were my problems. And about doubts, uh, yeah, I had some too. I think the, um, the biggest, uh, you know, when you have a big game, and uh, uh, the, the team is losing, and you have bases loaded, and you strike out, and we go home. Uh, you know, it bothers me going back, uh, driving back uh, to, to my house. Uh, it's working in my mind. And um, I used to deal with that by mentally um, thinking positive for the next day. And uh, it takes work, but uh, um, that's something that, you know, any hitter can struggle with that. Mike, one of the things I, re I remember very well. You don't want to ask me about hitting? <laughs> no. <laughs> you didn't hear my thing yesterday. Oh, yeah. I got hit off of Smoltz. <laughs> Is he the guy? John, John Smoltz. That was a chill. <laughs> <laughs> No, but, <laughs> but injuries and, and doubts. Um, when you got hit by the line drive, I believe it was Sandy Alomar mm -hmm. in, what was it, in 98. Um, you still got the 30 starts. And uh, your pitching coach at the time said to me, you realize that he pitched um, after the injury the rest of the season with a cap that was half a size larger and never said anything about it. But did you worry that, that being hit like that and having that, that um, kind of concussion injury would, would affect the rest of your career? Um, uh, well, obviously at the time, yes. Um, I mean, I get, I get hit. Um, when, when I get done throwing the ball, I'm 52 feet from the hitter something like that mm -hmm. and and so the ball's coming back pretty fast and and so I get I get hit with one and and uh, so from that when I got back to the mound uh, a couple weeks later uh, every swing every foul ball every everything was a flinch it was 
it was it was tough. It was tough for the rest of that year to get through it and not and not think that every ball that was hit was going to come back at me. But uh, um, you know, I, the more you went, the more I went out there, and of course, you know, not every ball comes back at you. So the the, the farther I got from the from the injury, the the better it got in my head, and so the psychological part of it started fading away. And of course, then we get to the, the season ends, and you get the whole off season to be away from it. So by the time I got back the next season. Uh, I really didn't worry about it much anymore. I had changed the way I threw the ball a little bit. If you went back and saw video of me before it happened to video after it happened, um, that hop at the end, that, that came in after it happened so I could get myself up and see what was going on better. And I might even became a better fielder because I got my feet back on the ground better uh, after, after I got hit. So, uh, but it was, it, was tough for, it was tough for the rest of that season. I was, uh, and it was a tough injury to, to get hit right you know, I mean, it hit me right here. So if it's off by an inch, I'm I'm probably never going to play again. So, uh, you know, it's 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 a game of inches, and that was a big inch for me. It, was, it really was. One thing I think people will really enjoy from each one of you is to hear what game that you played in is the most memorable for you. Start with Lee. I have to go with um, 1987 All-Star game. I, um, I would end up, not because I was the winning pitcher, but I was the last guy standing. Everyone else had played, and we were in Oakland. And uh, I think our starting pitcher went like uh, two-thirds of an inning, and they took him out. And I ended up pitching three innings in this game. And we are in Oakland, and to end the game, I swear I got probably one of the best hitters in the game was um, Mark McGuire. And that was where I think I got that recognition of being a really good relief pitcher. And... Uh, I know it's starting to rain a little bit, but I, I wanted to back up a little bit to what Mariano said about, you know, how you handle that situation uh, as a closer. But I don't know if we have enough time. I want to, I really want to try to do it in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like it. I like it. No, we, we, got, we don't have enough time. <laughs> Go for it. We got time. We got time. <laughs> um, you want to help him here? I'll help him. I'll help him. Yes. <laughs> No, that, that was 87 All-Star game. Was probably the, the key game. <laughs> How about you, Mike? My, my most memorable game? Uh, I mean, I, I, was, I got lucky to be in a lot of games that were pretty cool, and I mean, so did a lot of guys, but I, I got to pick my last one. I mean, I just, to play all those years, uh, to win 19 games a couple of t other times, and, and uh, you know, to be in a couple World Series and not, and not, and not be fortunate enough to win and and go down to the very last game and uh, and I got to just throw the story back one the game before the very last game we were in Toronto and I got hit with a line drive in my elbow right elbow in like the third inning or second inning or whatever it was and Gene Monahan comes jogging out and Joe Torrey comes out and there's a huddle on the mound and I'm holding my elbow and he goes where'd you get hit and I go right here and he goes well you're out and I said, no, wait a minute. I guess he, it doesn't hurt that bad. Let me see if I can throw. So I throw, and I, did, I was OK. And I, I, and I had seen marks right, but it hit right on the bone, not on any muscle or anything. So anyway, I survived that game and get to pitch in Boston for the last game of the season and, and to win the last game. But you know, it, was, it was a long time coming, I guess. And I knew that was it. I knew it wasn't going to be another year. So that was like everything had built up to that point over my career. And, and dealing with all the other almost things that I dealt with. And so that was my, that's mine. There's the last one, the very last one. It is amazing, though, that that day it was a, double, it was a Sunday doubleheader. Yeah, because we got rained out Saturday. Yeah, and, you, and so therefore it, it, it would, you didn't get very much attention on the fact that you won your 20th game, but I just remember that. Well, the weather was like this on Sunday, too. Yeah, it was. <laughs> we had two uh, rain delays. In the game I pitched, we had two rain delays. So it was... Watch it's coming down now. <laughs> How about you, Mariano? Keep going there. <laughs> my, my was, uh, oh my God, so many of them. But uh, I would say that uh, 2003, 2003 or 2004, uh, that was a special, special game. Seventh game. Uh, seven game. Eight, 50 four. pitches. I don't know about 50 pitches. Yeah, I, I actually looked for that. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was in that game, too. Yeah, you know. That was a good game. game. Really? That was a good game. That was our game again. That that actually, game. I mean, if you go back, 
I, I wrote a piece about saying that I thought it was one of the most consequential games in baseball history because all the things that happened with, you know, Aaron Boone pinch runs and then hits the home run and then there's a the whole thing with the trade for, uh, for, uh, for Alex Rodriguez going to Boston and then that gets canceled and he ends up in New York and Bill Miller ends up in Boston because of uh, um, Alex Rodriguez getting the single off. He was a... Yeah. Although I thought actually, no, it was a joke. Yeah, so, we all so. think it was Kevin Maguire who got the hit. That was a great game. So, no, it's a, it's a, it's a, it was a wonderful game. Wonderful game. Like I said, many of them, but that one is, it was special. For a lot of us, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Because when I was walking down the right field line with producer Charlie Moynihan, uh, and, and Aaron was only around like second base at the time, we were walking down to go start to do interviews. I looked at him and said, you realize that we're getting paid to cover the greatest game played in the greatest sports venue in America. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I'm from Boston, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> How about you, Andrew? Uh, for me, it was 95. Uh, that's you know, the, the game we, we, we won against the Yankees, uh, that, that was it. <laughs> oh, come on, you got four World Series after, after that one. <laughs> and these right. two guys were, yeah, were having it. <laughs> <laughs> you got four World Series, so after that. But um, yeah, that, that, was, uh, that, that was a big moment for us uh, uh, as a team for me and for the city. How about you, Harold? I have two. My first game I ever played, my dad saw, so that's important. <laughs> and I never played with the Yankees, so I got to play in the World Series with the Oakland A's in 1990. But we didn't win, but I think every professional baseball player wants to play in the World Series, and I got a chance to play in the World Series. Do you have a lot of fun with That was a colorful team, to say the least. Uh, was a lot of characters on that team. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fun team. It's, uh, it was a little bit of a stunning World Series, but you know, those things happen. Kind of weird because me and Willie McGee got traded on the same day to go play on that team. He's, he was a great hitter too. I, I do remember that, and, I, and one thing I thought was fascinating was that Sandy Alderson was the general manager, mm -hmm. and people said, "Here you got two superstars, and you pick, you, you get them at, at uh, uh, in waiver deals, and um, play everything later." Yes. Yeah. And he said, you know what, a general manager w asks and demands of his players that they play hard every day. So when the time comes, the general manager has to show the players he's playing as hard as they are. And, I, and he said, I mean, he said, you know how great, you, you, these are two really great players. And everybody in, in, my, in our clubhouse knows what it means to have Harold Baines or Willie McGee walk in the door. And I've never forgotten that. It's a lesson for a lot of yeah. fellow managers. We have some questions from the audience, and uh, um, they, they're pretty good ones. Uh, for Kristen Trevito in York, Pennsylvania, for Edgar, um, what's the biggest life lesson the game of baseball has taught you? You know, I think it's, um, uh, if you work hard um, and are persistent, um, uh, it teaches you how to deal with failure uh, because we fail so often as, uh, as a player and hitters and, and pitcher too. Uh, and, and you know, that you play with, with a team, it's a cause, everybody wants to win, and uh, dealing with, with, um, with those failures, um, uh, to me, I think it's, it's, it's a lesson, because you learn how to, um, you fail, and you get up again, and you can succeed after you fail uh, many times, so that was a lesson for me. Great. Yes. This is from Wanda in 
Hopewell Junction, New York, and it's from Mike Mishin. <laughs> this is a pretty funny question. Did you get an opportunity to take anything out of the Yankee Stadium? <laughs> at the at. Have you heard of, like take something from Babe Ruth or something? <laughs> Babe wasn't there, but hey. no, I just. Uh, well, maybe they had. Some... He was already here. Uh, when, well, on the last game, the last game. In, do you call it the old stadium? Because like it's the mm -hmm. middle stadium now. Right. Because there was the old stadium, and then they had another stadium, and now they have another stadium. <laughs> so the the one that I played in, uh, well, we were all we were all on the field after the game was over. My kids were out there. Everybody's kids were out there. Uh, we scooped up some dirt from the mound. Uh, so we put all this stuff in cups, like just like cups out of the dugout where the water was. You just put some dirt in and take it inside. And uh, so I got some of that. Um, I'm sure I have a chair that I'm not supposed to have or <laughs> you know, something like that. But I do remember this, that all this stuff, that, whatever we got, there was an authenticator in the locker room. So we got a cup of dirt from the pitcher's mound. We got a port and a Ziploc baggy, and they got authenticated that it's real dirt from Yankee Stadium. <laughs> uh, so, so in my kids, one of their drawers back home, they've got he's got a Ziploc baggy with a little sticker on it with an ID number that says that it's really dirt from Yankee Stadium, not from the backyard. <laughs> well, I do remember after that game, Mariano having Ziploc bags, whatever, scooping up the dirt. And you gave me one. There you go. And one of my best friends um, is a three, was a three-generation Yankee season ticket holder. Um, and I gave him that. And he has it in a gold-plated trophy case <laughs> in his living room in Needham, Massachusetts. And, I knew that was and, it, and he, he said when you, he said to me before we came up here, um, we just talked about you and being in the Hall of Fame. And he said, you know, I'll never in my life get another, another gift which means more to my family. And he said, I've already written so that my son, who's about seven years old now, he is, will inherit that, the dirt from that mile. So you've, you've passed on generations. <laughs> we'll do but, good, you know. <laughs> I'd love to have kept it, but... It, it, I think in the end, three generations of Yankee season ticket holders. That's very good. And yeah. the fact that the, the, the inheritance is already signed. He's a lawyer, of course. There you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> but I appreciate it very much. Cool. This is from Rich McHale from Garrett Valley, Pennsylvania. It's for Lee Smith. Who was the toughest hitter you ever faced? Oh, man, there's a few of them. <laughs> Well, uh, you, Why is Baines just jumping in all your questions? Yeah, he never talked now. Now he wants to, now he wants to talk the whole time. Yeah, yeah, now he talks. No, my, I didn't talk. My hand talked. <laughs> uh, uh, there's, a, there's a young man, the third baseman. I don't know why he hit me. He wasn't a very good player. This guy by the name of Mike Schmidt. <laughs> I always wondered why every time I came to Philly, there was a limo outside the hotel waiting for me to make sure I wasn't late to the ballpark. <laughs> <laughs> this is from Neil P. in Northern Jersey, and it's also for you, Lee. Um, and you've already gone into this, but um, about going from, but this is about going from throwing multi innings to just going into the ninth inning. Was there a real change in that, or did you just? Go out and just pitch. I always had that. I couldn't get that starter mentality out of there. I wanted to go out there, you know, and throw more and pitch more. Because I, I go out and then throw an inning and, and I throw like 12 pitches. I'm like, hey, can I throw after the game? But it was just one of those things that I always wanted to go, you know, go back out there. You know, because back then the uh, relievers threw from the, from the windup most of the guys, you know. So I was like, Wanting to get a little more rhythm going, you know, because I, as, as uh, Mariano can say, you know, test is that as a reliever, you don't get proper amount of work. You either, you either pitch like five days straight or you sit in the bench for like a week and a half. So you don't, there's no set day you can go out there like some of us can 
threw on the side, you know, and then go and get there, um, you know. Are you, you talking to me? Off day. <laughs> <laughs> so, man, that mentality was I wanted to, I just wanted to be able to go out so I'm ready. You know, I felt more I throw, the better I get movement, get movement off the ball. You're thinking fun of starters. <laughs> <laughs> Because I get to go out and warm up the yeah, right yeah, way. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, this day, 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 <laughs> work every days. fifth day. You know yeah. when you're going out there. But Mario, did you ever bring your golf clubs? Take you out. I didn't bring no. Yeah, take you out. <laughs> Most of bring the golf club. And you know, the game, you got the games important from the seventh inning <laughs> on. And where was Messina? He's in the clubhouse having a sandwich. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he only worked six innings. Yeah. <laughs> Spring training, I went six? home at noon. You guys uh, hated it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, listen, y'all. Before noon, before noon. Before noon, yeah, sometimes. Before noon. <laughs> yes. Hey, y'all could have been starters. You didn't have to hit good. <laughs> okay? I know. I know. <laughs> You could have got a curveball. You could have got a starter. Go, uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> That's what I say. Actually, when curveball. Spring training with the Braves. You go over there at, at, when they were at Disney, and if you wanted to find any of their starting pitchers, you had to be there like 8:30 in the morning because they all went in, worked out at like started at 5:30 in the morning. Glavin, Smoltz, Maddox, they were going to the golf course at 9:30. There yeah, you go. Hey, I was his starter. You don't see the worst thing doing that. <laughs> no. There you go. The worst thing about being a starter is a day in spring training that you actually had to go out and pitch, because the rest of the time you just got your work done and went on home, That's, and went to the golf course, and then. <laughs> they yeah, really you can't. They worked out. We d we got a lot of grief for that. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. We'll so okay. so. Uh, Starting pitchers don't have to make them the uh, the long bus trips very often either, do they? They set oh, they the know. schedule up. No, so no, we went to the, the we went across the street to the minor league place and pitched. <laughs> yeah, we got pretty much coddled in spring training. Yeah, you don't want to throw? Good, go ahead. Mo, get on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You got to throw to three hitters, like in, in that. For Myers. Uh, yeah, and and two <laughs> three, hours three, from here. Three hours ride. <laughs> Come on, man. In July, I say, man, I don't, I'm going to do that no more. I pay my dues already, so do not put no gray uniform on my locker. Yes. I, I tell them, I say, yes. every time that yes, I pay, yes. they say, like, hey, yes. what is this gray <laughs> uniform doing here? Right. Take that thing away. I don't uh, want that thing. You're big, so you're big league in the guys in spring Oh, yeah. Uh, the young boys, yes. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Hey, Mario, didn't we, didn't we uh, part of the first guys to say, hey, as a closer, I have to throw the fourth or the fifth inning so you don't want to wait around to see the, the ninth inning on the road. And you're facing yeah. the right guys. I yes. said, yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> I couldn't get that right. Florida State League player of the year out. He wore me out, man. That's I it. Like, <laughs> That's <laughs> it. Yep. It's, uh, how, 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 how much, you know, because you were an everyday player. I mean, do you get much time when you could, you could tell people, uh, tell your manager, you know, this, I want to make this trip. I don't want to make that one. No, I never. Tony Larissa took pretty good care of his everyday players. So, you know, I, I got to the point where these guys are talking about it. I didn't have to make road trips. So usually you um, stayed back and took extra batting practice or maybe they went to a minor league game. So if it was more than an hour trip or anything like that, most of your everyday players, you had to take three or four on every trip. But most of you guys stayed back and got to work in the minor leagues. And this is for anyone to answer, but <clears throat> as you watch the game today, are there a couple of things that, that bother you as the game evolves? Yes. <laughs> strikeouts. Too many. Too many strikeouts. I mean, I'm not, I'm not blaming the pitchers. I'm blaming the hitters. Just their approach is totally different than it should be. That's my opinion. Well, <laughs> you got no, you got nothing. I'm a closer, man. I, I know. I, I don't know. The game, pitching wise, <laughs> pitching wise, you know, obviously the starters' role has changed a little bit. It's starting to evolve. They 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 put a guy out there for an inning or two innings at the start of the game to face certain hitters one time, and then they'll bring the guy in who's going to pitch, you know, three or four or five innings in the middle, and then they go again. So. You know, every game, it's not, it's not uncommon to see five, six pitchers in, a, in a, just a regular, normal game that ends up like five to three. 
and and so that has changed. And I know there's still starters out there that'll go out there and pitch six and seven innings, but you see more more times the guy who starts the game they don't expect him to go more than a couple of hitters or a, an inning or two at the most. And that was the plan from the beginning. And when when I played, when we played, that was not anywhere near part of the game ever. So so that part has evolved, at least that I've seen in the couple of years, you know, since we've played. Well, what, what bothers me is that, uh, you know, especially relievers now, they want to throw as hard as they can, but they don't know where the ball's going. You know, so there's no art of pitching no more. It's just how hard I can throw. The hardest that I throw, the better it is. And I, that's, that's not necessarily true because, I mean, you throw that ball hard, 100 miles per hour, you throw it over the plate, you're going to get hit. So the art of pitching is just getting lost, you know, especially as a closer. You know, you need to be there and know exactly what you're doing. Otherwise, you know, don't matter how hard you throw, you need to go there and pitch. And we don't see him that much. About a month ago, I was watching a game, stay at play to watch a game um, in which Kershaw pitched against Granky. And Granky averaged 92 miles an hour, 92.1. Uh, Kershaw was 91.4 or something. And a couple of people said to me, you know what? If they had those radar gun readings and they were going into the draft, they wouldn't go in the first five rounds. The two guys are going to probably end up sitting on this stage someday. Yeah. And I thought, that's nuts. How can you sit in this? They wouldn't go in the first five rounds because they don't throw hard enough. Mm -hmm. I got a problem with the time clock uh, with a pitching. Uh, um, if I came out of the bullpen, I'd get like one warm-up pitch, man. They got like a time was like, like two minutes or something in between. When you come in, they have to bring back the cart for me because I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get like two warm-up tosses, man, like throw them down. So it's, it's like, what do you, you got to do? If I'm going to go to a game to see game, I want to see it play right. I don't want to see the guys rush through doing anything like that because the art of what the guys do is, is really tough. And I don't, I don't want to see anyone rush into that because that's your career lobby. Yep. Yep. That's great. Yeah. <clears throat> the great thing to me as someone who tried to do it but I loved watching it is that um, the game starts with the ball in the pitcher's hand. So I've always thought the pitcher was the offense, the hitter is the reaction, and it's the defense. But that's the way the game should be played. Exactly. It should be at the pitcher's tempo, um, and they have enough things going against pitchers today with all the, the juice balls and all the rest. But it's... <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> and the fact that when you do this with all the relievers that you now have to do because it's max effort fastball, that... What takes more time, um, like the relief pitcher going to the mound or six relief pitchers pitching in the game? <laughs> so yeah. it's, it's, I understand, and I understand a lot of it is television entertainment, but um, as I've always argued, I, I watch the games and love the game for one reason, players. That's it. You who play it, that's it. <laughs> And I think sometimes people don't un understand how hard everyone plays to be able to go out there and play enough games to stay in the major leagues. Howard, you signed very young. Yes. Were you, when you first started playing, were you surprised by the grind of it and had to learn physically how to be able to hold up? <coughs> Excuse me, it just wasn't the baseball side. Just my first time being away from home. That was the biggest thing to get used to first. I mean, I'd never been on a plane until I was drafted. Going to Appleton, Wisconsin. Where's Appleton, Wisconsin? You know, that's, for me, that was the most terrifying thing I've ever done. The baseball side was easy. It's just living on your own. I never really left on, lived on my own. But the, the organization really took care of me. They had families there in the, in the town that um, would put you up. And those families are still friends of mine today. So that's, that's what makes baseball players fortunate enough to be around people that care about you more so 
for who you are and not for what you do on the field. Did you find it a grind, Agent? Yeah, uh, at the beginning it was hard. Grew up in Puerto Rico, very small neighborhood. Uh, I didn't know the language, I didn't know English. Um, you know, coming, uh, never been out of the, uh, the states uh, of Puerto Rico. Um, it was hard the first, you know, through my, minor league it, it was hard. Uh, and it was a grind. Um, and, uh, and at the same time, it, it was uh, an adventure for me, I think, and, and that helped. I enjoy uh, competing and playing the game I love, I love. Uh, but it was a grind when I wasn't doing well. You know, that, that, that part is hard, but um, um, I think it's, it's a journey, which is fun. And I have one question for the pitchers. One thing that, that I find interesting, you still get people who say, well, pitchers aren't really athletes. Hmm. <laughs> and who says that? I don't know, because in... Who says that, Peter? <laughs> oh, I would like to know who says that. Usually, um... It's hit, one of these guys Hitting here? coaches. Hitting coaches. Hitting coaches. <laughs> no, but it, it, actually, it's ironic because, uh... I don't know how old you... Uh, how many years you have been in the minor leagues, but Buck Showalter took me in, onto the backfields to watch um, PFP for pitchers. And uh, in Fort Lauderdale, and he said something to me about, um, you know, what do you see? I said, well, this one guy would have been a number one pick of the cut. I said, he has a lot of trouble fielding. How do you a starting pitcher? How's that going to work? He said, well, I don't know. He said, but, you know, don't worry about that. We'll, we'll worry about that later. And then he said, I mean, tell me one thing that really sticks out. And I said, the guy playing shortstop. He looks like a ballet dancer. <laughs> you know what he said to me? Ballet, huh? He said, you know what? He's the best athlete here and best athlete on the whole team. And, and I give Buck credit for this. He said, the guys who end up at Cooperstown, the pitchers, they're all great athletes. Yes, they're, you're correct on that, Peter. <laughs> and I got I got I gotta say something about that, Peter, because I mean, everybody's talking about the hot corner. Hot corner, what is it called? Third base hot corner? Mm. How about the pitchers? <laughs> we're there, 60 feet, 6 inches. When we release the ball, it's about 54 feet. And we're throwing something, and we had to defend ourselves at the same time that we're throwing something. All right? These guys in third base, Edgar, He's already in position to feel the ball, okay? Now we're throwing and then we have to, win. and the ball's coming a hundred miles an hour to us. And we still have to catch the ball. So who's better than athlete? <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right. So. I was taught many years ago that one of the things, if you can go do it, is go out and look at the landing landing holes on the mound to judge and see how remarkable pitchers are. And I did spend time, even though you, you was, you, your concentration level probably never saw that I was standing in the bullpen up on the hill there in Baltimore watching your, uh, um, your between start uh, throws and how uh, your pitching coach and I would then go check out how you, you the, the, there was no like mess around the mountain. It was just two landing holes only. I did it with I used to do it with Maddox, and, uh, and 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 guys have been. I remember Lee as a basketball player. So, but it's in, in 2009, CC Sabathia won Game Five against the Angels, and the grounds crew in New York the next day said, right, "Come here." We know you like to see these things. And he took me out there. I mean, here's CC, about 300 pounds, with that kind of odd delivery. But obviously, his stride is so, his, not any variance. There, were, there weren't like three different landing. He landed the same way on every pitch. And that's why here we are, the only, I think, 
the only um, pitcher from his time period who won more game. There's one more game than CC is Mike. What is it? 255 to 270, and it's something that that that. And you're right about the the whole. People underestimate the fear factor of guys getting hit that that fast. But it's, a, it's one of the things that interests me most, and most is that that idea that a pitcher isn't an athlete is one of the silliest notions. Tell him, Peter. Tell him. <laughs> well, <laughs> let them know that, please. <laughs> but it's, I mean, it, it, it's not easy winding up in, I was a high school pitcher. I couldn't do it, but I know that. <laughs> Balls went a long way. <laughs> but, well, look. Thank you all for coming out. The rain is drowning you. Thank you, guys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, from my standpoint, you're very fortunate. Thank you.